Hey guys, welcome back to Learn to Guide Tutorials. In this video, I am going to show you how to dynamically provision EBS volumes to Kubernetes cluster that is running on AWS EKA service. Which means we would only need to manage storage class type and persistent volume claim resources. We don't need to worry about persistent volume resources and we don't need to create EBS volumes manually on AWS. Okay. So earlier we used to create all these resources like we create EBS volume on AWS, then we would create persistent volume with storage class types, then we would create persistent volume claim. But this dynamic provisioning just require only storage class type and persistent volume claim. Rest all will be created dynamically. In order to perform this task, you must have knowledge on Kubernetes and resources like persistent volume and persistent volume claim. Related links are mentioned in the description. Make use of it. Before getting to the topic, just a small request to those who are watching this video from our YouTube channel for the first time. We have already uploaded a lot of videos related to Ansible, Docker, AWS, Kubernetes and other technologies too. Please have a look. If you are interested in learning, please do subscribe now and click near the bell icon for more interesting and useful videos. Let's get started. I am just logging into the machine through which I manage my Kubernetes cluster. And this is the directory where I have all my application YAML files and uh, Kubernetes resource YAML files. And this is my application deployment file where I have uh, specified all the required options like what image I need to be used and container port and memory, CPU, all these things. And it is not having any volume specifications. And this is my persistent volume claim resource. And I have already specified all these details like I want 2 GB volume and storage class name. I am using the default GP2. These resources will be created under develop namespace. This is the persistent volume claim. I'm going to use it. But before that, let me check for any existing persistent volume or persistent volume claim. kubectl get pv. No resources found in default namespace. And let me check for uh, pvc under develop namespace. Again, there is no PVC bin available in this particular namespace. The storage class type, I'm using the default GP2. Doesn't matter even if you have a many storage class type. Anyway, you are going to use this storage class in your persistent volume claim. So let me open again my persistent volume claim client. So here I have a specified 2 GP and the storage class name is GP2. Let me apply this. YAML file and if you go to AWS EBS volume, I don't see any new volumes being created. Once you have applied the PVC kind, let us check the status of it. The PVC is created but the status is still showing pending. So this will be enabled only when your pods giving the request for the volume. Till then the status won't be turned to bound or available. Let us put the volume specification in our application deployment file. Under spec, specify the volumes. Name, new volume and persistent volume claim. Here you have to specify the exact claim name. Again under containers, you have to specify the volume mounts. name, new volume and the mount path, let us specify some temp slash data. Let us apply this deployment file again, kubectl apply hyphen f bus app dot yaml. So the deployment is applied. Let us check the status of uh, PVC. Now you have got the new volume. The status is showing now bound and this is the volume ID. Let me refresh my browser. This EBS volume is being created because of the PVC claim. We have not created this EBS volume manually. Let me change my replicas uh, from 1 to 2 to just make sure whether I am able to mount this EBS volume across my parts.
now I got two parts and both are running on same node. Let me put describe command for the newly created part. I'm able to see the mount point. Let's log into each part and we'll verify the mount point and we'll put some data. I'm logged into the first part. Let me put df-h and this is the volume 2 GB mounted on temp data. Touch temp data selva. Let me write some data on that volume. Log out from the part. Now let's log into the second part. Put df-h. That's it. Here also I am able to see the mounted volume. How about the data? The data written from the first part on the volume, it is available across my parts. That's it. Hope you have got an idea how to provision EVS volumes dynamically. See you in the next video. Till then, keep practicing and have fun. How did you feel? Is it helpful? Appreciate our efforts in the comment section below. Hit like button, share with your friends about us, subscribe our channel to get further updates, stay connected with us on social networking sites. For more free tutorials, visit our website www.lanetiguide.net.